It's the Athlete Podcast. We have one of my favorite human beings on the show today, Taylor Luhan. How you doing, bud? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm, I'm outstanding. It's 75 and sunny again. How about Northern Iowa? Well, it's 45 and sunny. All right. 45 is, is not bad for, for December. No, it's not bad at all, but January, February, that's when it's going to kick in the nuts. Yeah, that's a tough go. It's a yeah. tough go. Uh, walking from the car to the wrestling room in January and February. I, I it's gotta be different now that you're not in college, right? Um, because I can remember like I like I don't I don't remember like not seeing the sun like ever. Yeah. I don't know. It's gonna be like that again here soon. See, I never had a hard time going to class like in the spring or fall, but like as soon as winter hit, I'd have to walk like a mile across campus to get to a class. I'm like, I might, I might skip that one today. You know, yeah. it's a brutal, brutal walk. There is, it, it is unforgiving, unforgiving. And for a Georgia boy, yeah, having to deal with that, what was that like? Your first winter in Cedar Falls? I don't know. Doug just told us he's like, wear layers. I was like, okay, but then when the wind's blowing in your face, there's just not too many like layers you can wear, you know. But I've gotten better, so I'm definitely like I've, I've switched. So like back in Georgia when the summer hit, I was like a lot better at the heat, and now I'm a lot better in the winter. But like if it gets above ninety, I'm melting. Like I feel yeah. terrible. So yeah. I'm like a one eighty. So I need to get like kind of my Georgia toughness back, just like barn burner days. You remember like the old compound? Like it was just a Tin bucket in there. You're boiling. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's funny. Trying to explain some of the things that we did to people now, Taylor, they have a hard time believing that I would torture. Like, so I, it's funny. We just got off a podcast with Jaden Ironman, and, and I was telling him, I got soft as a coach. I used to torture those boys. Like, you were around during those days when I would bring a, a squad down to Georgia yeah. and torture folks. And look, I like, I'd like to think that it's just me getting softer in my old age and my daughter has softened me in general. But um, I think it's kind of the way of the sport. And I, I don't think it's a bad thing <laughs> in every respect. Do you see that across the, the, the country or is it just me getting soft? The sport softening up or like individual? Meaning, no, I mean, just like as – like, look, man, we used to train for 24 hours straight. Yeah. <laughs> you, you were in those lockins, man. Yeah. Um, I don't see too many people doing those anymore. I don't know. I think we were just dumb enough, though, too. Fair I think enough. we had to bridge the gap of not being good wrestlers and do stupid workouts, you know? Like, if we were better at wrestling, we wouldn't have to get do. away with that. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. Oh, um, you don't think that that's like across the board, though? Like there were, the, look, I mean, we, there. Were, I know for for us here in Poway, we're taking a far more scientific approach. Like those kids were off on Wednesday. I don't remember. I don't remember in high school when I was coaching at a, at a club level ever their their high school teams ever giving them a Wednesday before competition off. Yeah, I feel like in high school we were definitely on all the time. I don't know. Like, do you, why do you think that's coming around? Hmm. I think that there is so much data now around hmm. rest and whether that be, you know, active recovery, sauna, cold plunge, yeah, sleep, yeah. sleep habits, or whether that just be like mental freshness. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that there's a lot of data out there to, to support Look, these kids need a break, and especially yeah. at a high level, man. Right? Like you're doing it at a at a, at a senior level. Mm -hmm. You ain't going twelve days in a row. There's no way. No, I mean, but you miss a workout here and there. But there's still something like satisfies your training, right? Like I still do stupid workouts with Doug, mm -hmm. not for maybe the benefit of it used to be, but just I enjoy doing those workouts with him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like it fills my cup that way. But in a training sense, I don't think it's really doing much except maybe pushing your boundaries but it just fulfills something you know what i'm saying like doing stupid workouts like we really enjoy doing it here and i don't know why i think oh. it's like you're so like all your like like your masks are all down you know what i'm saying like you know like when you're in hard scrap 
And like, I think you are who you are at that point. Like if you're like, screw you or like brotherly love, whatever it is, I feel like you are who you are. So like being able to pull those walls down during those hard workouts, it's like, it's addictive. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You get, uh, I, I would agree with you. It is, um, it's an interesting thing. Cause, and, and I think, and this is maybe I'm biased when I say this, cause I, I do love, Doug and Lee so much. I think that they uh, they bring that out in people more than anyone else I've ever seen. Yeah, because Rose is a crazy sob too. Oh yeah, you know just, he's just a lot quieter about it. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure, he's crazy. Talk to me about Roper, man. Like, like I, I'm going to get to some Schwab stories, but yeah, yeah. Tell me about why you think Roper's a crazy son of a bitch. I don't know, man. Just how his mind ticks. Like, he's the most consistent guy I've been around, right? He thinks about the sport. He loves the sport. He'll do anything for his athletes. You know, he always has thinking of new ways to approach it, new techniques, you know. But he individualizes it to the athlete, right? So, like, if you need to do hard, stupid workouts, okay, we'll put that in your training. If you're a technique guy, we'll put that in your training, right? So it's so individualized across the board. Mm. I, don't, I don't think anyone spends more time thinking about the sport and thinking about his athletes too, you know? I mean, just tons of notebooks of like, how this workout go today, how this workout go today. I mean, he still has mine from all the way, shit, sixth grade, seventh grade, you know? Yeah. I, just I, saw, been- I just saw Joel Shaw's reaction to that, and that's not bullshit. No, like that's not bullshit. Like the dude has buckets and cases of of things that are written down about his athletes, and that is an impressive, impressive thing. But he, it, it's not just the intellect, to mm-hmm. me, because because that's there, right? Yeah, he pours more of himself into his athletes. Mm-hmm. than most folks can you talk to me about that a little bit i don't know because it's just we have a weird not a weird relationship we have a different relationship because like i've known him for so long right so like when i first met him he's a lot bigger right had a little more hair and had a lot more back issues i remember he drove this old dodge pickup truck right he pulled into practice and he's just like pissed off because he was teaching at the time and he just marches into practice. And I'm in sixth grade. I'm like, oh, God. He looks like he's mad today. And my dad's like, all right, get out of the truck, go. It's like, okay. And going Ooh. to now, like, I, I don't know, man. He's far more zen now than he ever was. For sure. But I've definitely seen different sides of him. Like, I remember he never cursed. Right. So my first year, you and I, when he was up here, and he started cursing, I was like, I mean, it made me uncomfortable until I was a senior, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, but it, he is he is such an interesting cat. And I, yeah. I guess we could go on all day about rope, but you got another interesting cat in Doug Schwab. Oh yeah. Tell me about the first time he got you in the sauna. So I don't know if I'm supposed to, I told this story one time to like a newspaper and Doug got on me for telling it, but I don't know if it really matters. But the reason I committed to you and I right? Of course, the relationships and everything. But after this workout, I committed right away. It was me, Doug, Dylan Peters, Jake Hodges in the sauna. And he's like, all right, we got a thousand kettlebell, swing, kettlebell swings between the four of us. Go. And I'm 18. I was like, oh, okay. You know, and I'm the tallest one in the group by a foot. You know, Dylan Peters come up my shoulder, Jake Hodges a little above. And so we're doing kettlebell swings in the sauna. And then I think we got in the cold tub afterwards and i told dylan i was like yep i'm coming here like i don't know just like after that workout i'm like yep i'm definitely coming here you know we've continued to do stupid workouts like that over the last eight to nine years you want to tell everybody what fun balls are fun balls oh yeah so all fun ball is just you pick a ball up you put it over your shoulders but you add extra stress by being in a sauna and then uh did you ever do it with the cards uh-huh. oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the first time Joe Shaw, the first time, no, it was the second time I was in Cedar Falls. The first time was like, what, 
what I like to consider my initiation. Because I, I guess I, I, I sat in song with, with Doug for a while and we were bullshitting. But I think the, the second time I came to Cedar Falls, Doug Schwab texts me. He goes, hey, do you want to play cards? I'm like, sure. <laughs> and and uh, I, I go, all right. He, he goes, well, just meet me at West Jam at this time and bring a pair of shorts. I go, okay, cool, cool, cool. So there's a 100-pound medicine ball in the sauna waiting for me. And you pick up the first card, and if you, you're wrong about the color, you have to choose whether it's going to be red or black. If you're wrong, then you have to do the number of fun balls that it says on the card. Uh, face cards are 10, and aces are 22? Uh, Joker's 22. Joker's 22. What are aces, yeah. 11? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, and I can I can remember going, oh, what have I got myself into? And Roper, Roper walks in about – he peeks his head in about 30 seconds, you know, or 30 minutes into the workout. He looks at me and goes, you are fucking nuts. And he just walked out. <laughs> But here's the thing, like, he's right there doing them with us, you know, before his back was, like, as bad as it is, like, he would do them with us. Mm -hmm. Which is probably he why he had a bad back. Probably, probably. <laughs> I didn't touch a fun ball for two years because, like, my bag was messed up. And I was like, I guess it's probably about time. But, like, he'll, he'll, uh, Doug will get on kicks of workouts, right? So we got, like, uh, new, you know, the ski machines? Mm -hmm. He got really big into those. So, I mean, for, like, three months straight, we're doing ski workouts. Cause he'd be like, Hey Doug, you want to work out on Sunday? Yeah. yeah. It'll text you a time. You come in. It's like, all right, we're going to do. So this is what we've been doing. So you have 20 seconds to get hundred meters. Right. And then you have 40 to get 200. So on and so forth. So the highest anyone's be able to get is 800 meters and what? Two, two minutes, 40 seconds. Mm -hmm. But you pyramid up. Right. And you have like whatever the time is and a half to recover. Oh. it's just stupid but then it becomes a game and a challenge and like you actually enjoy it so like i just finally got like seven and i was like over the moon about it you know and doug had gotten a seven but uh, a month earlier i was like finally i got it you know this 45 year old man is just whooping my ass in these workouts and i'm like super happy if i can even like come closer beat him one day he's a psychopath he's a psychopath <laughs> in, in the best way possible Truly. oh for sure I mean, like, I've never met anyone who cares about his athletes as much as Doug does. You know, just will do anything for you. Mm -hmm. I think he'd bury a body for you. I think Rope would do the same thing, too, though. <laughs> oh, I know. I mean, I've heard <laughs> rumors. We got so many pig farms around here. We get rid of body. <laughs> Joe Saw, go ahead, man. What do you say? Uh, Joe Saw, you I was ahead. just, I was just, like laughing at the fact that you know how uh there's that whole adage of like you you crave things that you have in your childhood like food and things like that it sounds like taylor must have had some very hard workouts when he was a, a small child and coming up and now he just like can't get enough of it maybe i don't know try to me mold i mean me and my old man would wrestle and he'd beat the hell out of me maybe it's that just like the feeling of uh i don't know i, I do think it's like once you do those hard workouts, like you are your true self to a fault, yeah. right? Like how react, how you react. It's almost like when you're drunk. Like you ever met someone when they like get pretty tuned up, like they're yeah. love, fun, like fun to be around. Or or they're mean and they're nasty and they're exactly. whatever, right? right? I think workouts do the same thing. I think it just takes that layer off you. Like you are who you are. How are you going to react, right? Yeah. Like are you getting like your ass kicked in the corner over there and you're trying to fight? Or are you just like, yep. Yeah. Today's one of those days. You know what I'm you know, saying? It's funny that you bring that up because I'm trying to get to that point with my son mm -hmm. more often because he's got a gas tank on. Like yeah. a, he's got a look, look. He's got a gnarly gas tank on. Like he can oh, go. Yeah. Like if nothing else, like I ain't saying he's the greatest wrestler in the world, but the kid can go. Right? Yeah. He's got. He's got. He's got a motor on. The problem is with that. Is that it's harder to get him to that point. Yeah. Do you see well, what I'm saying? Well, like, like the point of exhaustion. The point of like, all right, this is who you really are. Yeah. Right? yeah. This is you. You you some bitch. Like, like you know, I 
I can't break them in the room anymore. It's really hard to break them in the room. Huh? I mean, I guess I could, because I. But I'm not. <laughs> there are rules against that, as it turns yeah. out. <laughs> there, you know, Dyfus. Oh, Johnny Law crazy. might be coming for you. <laughs> right. I might be. Uh, yeah, have some bracelets on. But no, I mean, it, it's hard to break them in the room now, because because mm -hmm. we got kids that'll beat the dog shit out of them. Like we got a good wrestling team here. Yeah. Yeah. And, but. You ain't gonna break them. Yeah. Like it's not. So what I'm doing now is putting them in the cold water. And you know boy, like cold water? Oh no. Oh no. What's Southern California sign? Oh boy. Oh boy, does that get them in 30 seconds? <laughs> so come up is there like anything else that you would suggest? Well, no, I just wanted to get in the cold water in the morning, right? So yeah. it's every morning before seven. That's tough. It's, it's not easy. It's yeah, but like that, that discipline sucks. Every yeah. morning, you know? Yeah. Having, well, I mean, you guys don't have to do it, but like imagine here, like, yeah, break up your ice every morning. So we, no, there's ice in our in our cold plunge uh -huh. um every morning. And, but no, you uh, see where people have like a horse trough. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Trough and like yeah. every winter they'll break her up. Yeah, you you that's uh that's a different level because mm -hmm. the air is kicking your ass as well as the water yeah um but i guess what i'm trying to say is how would you go about because you ain't gonna break my wrestling man. the kid just first of all he loves to wrestle so he'll just do it all day and everybody in the room that's a year old or two years older than him is whooping his ass so you ain't gonna break him on that yeah. how would you how would you go about breaking him if you were me <laughs> how would i go about breaking your son I don't know, man. I mean, I think hard workouts. I think hard workouts get a lot out of you. I mean, what does he hate doing? That cold water's a son of a bitch. Cold like water? He, yeah, but the, the burpees too. Like he does not like burpees. So maybe we yeah. do we do some burpee workouts. I don't know, man. Like I, I it's hard to get it out of him mm -hmm. like we got it out of you. And part part of that is because I was doing those twenty four hour workouts with you, yeah. you know. So yeah, it's a it's a tricky thing, man. It, it's a tricky thing. You know, he he still to this day says he's going to be a Panther for sure. So he oh, better wow. start. No, for real, he does. Like yeah. he wrote it. He wrote it on his thing. Uh, the guidance counselor gave him whatever. Yeah. Like, like I'm going to you and I. I'm, I'm, you don't even know what that means yet. <laughs> Old your boy. He's a freshman. Freshman? Mm -hmm. How's uh how's coaching him? Has that changed the older he's gotten? Yeah. I don't like it. You don't like coaching him? No, just... I'd rather be dad right now, if I'm gonna be yeah. honest with you. Um I don't love it. Uh I don't know. I, uh, he I think likes it. You know, like, like the, the dynamic of it. Yeah. Okay. You know, there's a big part of me that just wants to be more dad, though, right? Yeah. Like, so, you know what, Lou? I, I, I have um, in the last year, I think it has gotten a lot better. Okay. Because he sees guys that are ranked two, three, four in the country coming up to me and asking me for advice and. Mm. Oh, dad must know a little bit. <laughs> you know, I actually know some things. Yeah, and and he sees me wrestling with him and and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. um, I how's think it it's, how's it work at home? I'm just curious. Uh, it's really not easy when he starts yeah. drilling on my wife. Like, hey, what if I? I'm like, hey, bud, let's put it away right now. Yeah, let's yeah. put it away right now because, and and we've and again we've gotten we have gotten better at that because the rule generally generally is it stops in the truck okay like it stops in the truck it, we do not bring this to the table but my wife is a psychopath <laughs> so she's crazy she's like you know she's the one that's like what's your weight like are you okay. you know what what tournament are you going to this weekend because it's it's different for varsity a for varsity yeah. b and jb and freshman and you know so what, how did you do against this kid in the room today? And yeah, so yeah. she, like, you know, I, I can't deny her that because I get that in the truck and I get that and I see it in practice. So I know, <laughs> well, she has to get it out of him. 
So generally the rule is it stops in the truck. Um, it's kind of interesting in high school when I became a freshman. So it was my dad taking me to practice all the time, you know, mm -hmm. and then it switched to my mom. It was way more me and my mom. And my mom would take me to tournaments and this, that, and the other. And it's weird how it kind of shifted there. Why Not that my dad didn't care. He cared too much sometimes, you know. Oh. But it's weird how it just kind of shifted. But I think he knew he had to take the the step back because he kind of just handed me over a rope. He's like, all right, he's yours. You take care of him. I'm going to fall back, you know. I wonder if that was easy for him. What do you think? Probably not. But, like, it's weird, man. Now I do not like talking about wrestling with my dad. Really? I just, I don't know. Well, I like to step away from it. Like, the most fun I've had with my old man sometimes is just shooting the breeze about, like, cars, right? Like, when, I think it was when COVID got canceled, I drove home. Me and my girlfriend, now wife, drove to Georgia. And we changed the brake pads on my sister's Jeep. And it was the most fun I had with my dad in a long time. That's pretty dope. But I think he, he wore a lot of the stress, too. You know, like, if I lost, he was upset more than I was. So I was one that was like, hey fucking cool it yeah right you know what i'm saying yeah uh, well well when when did that come when did when did that hey man hey enough enough when did what year did that come senior year high school uh, no no college oh really yeah i i uh very respectful of my dad right so like i didn't really tell him you know it's yes sir no sir i know you're saying and then there'd be certain little spurts of like i'd snap back and then be like okay i'm glad i saw that out of you but there was one time in Vegas, I didn't have a good Vegas tournament, and he was upset, and I was upset too. And I was like, hey, we're fucking done with it. We're not pounding anymore. We're going to get a good meal, and we're going to go our ways. We're done with it. You know, and it was like the best thing. Because, like, I see how it wears on my mom too, you know? Yeah, she's got to deal with him. Yeah, she's got to deal with a fucking bear. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> I think that was the best thing he ever did for me, man. And then I was so fortunate again to have Roper, Fretwell, uh, Ryan Willman, who's my – somehow, like, we had an assistant coach who coached at West Point as our high school coach in Carrollton, Georgia. And he was great for me. Beat the shit out of me all the time, you know. Yeah, he was yeah, awesome. Yeah. So I had so many, like, great people I could fall back on, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny – you say that, right? Uh, Carrollton, Georgia. Who's you, know, you got a West Point coach coaching? Like, not typical, probably. No. But here's what I'm finding. What is typical is guys that are in your situation always seem to have the same stories. Look, I'm 74 years old, bro. I will tell you that there's, I'm still involved with this sport because I have had amazing, not good, not great, amazing coaches mm -hmm. throughout my entire life. Like all the people that are still lifers in this sport, they're the ones that had great coaching coming up. Yeah. The psychopath dad generally instills a level of disdain for this mm -hmm. sport. That doesn't go away. It's hard to wipe that off, man. You see so, a ton of it, like you so much. much, so much. Like I help out a club here, and you just see it, and you're like, "Hey, man, this doesn't matter. Who gives a shit about AAU State right now?" You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then, like, I was there too, so I'm like, "This is everything." You know well, what's the? This means all right. So now that you're working with young ones. Yeah. Because this is where I'm at right now. This is where I'm at with him. And my wife tries, like, she and I kind of butt heads on this. How do I explain to both my son and my wife, no one gives a shit what you did at the Christmas tournament in December of your freshman year? No one. No one. Yeah. No Schwab, Lee Roper. John Smith, Tom Brands, Kale Sanderson has never, ever once called me and be like, what do they do with that Christmas tournament? That one? <laughs> Not never. Yeah. Not never. So how do I explain that without taking away or devaluing yeah. the importance of like, hey, it is freaking important to the kid. Like the yeah. kid, the kid is like, if he loses, he's bummed. He's psyched if he wins. And and like he threw away his his 
So he, his first high school tournament was mm-hmm. this past weekend. He lost to a nationally ranked kid in the semis and wrestled back for third and beat a guy that he lost to a week before. And he took, he took third and it's pretty good. Pretty good. Right. Yeah. He threw the freaking bronze medal away. And, and my, my wife was pissed. But it's a good thing, right? Like, there's a certain amount of it. It's a good thing. It's like, yeah, we're hungry for more, right? We want more. But you got to be satisfied at the end of the day, too. It's a yeah. weird fine line of being, like, obsessive and then, like, not giving a shit. And it's hard. Mm. Like, how are you dealing with it? Because it's not it, – how are you dealing with that? I've started to go on the other end, man. Like, I – none. it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, like, when I'm 40, like – is it going to matter? No. Right? Like, are my kids really going to care about how I did at the Bill Farrell? Now, it doesn't take away how hard I compete, but it just takes the uh, added anxiety off, right? Like, no, I'm just going to go out there and compete as hard as I want to, as hard as I can. And I'm doing this because I want to. I'm not doing this because I have to, right? And I'm 40, and I'm doing whatever, unless it's wrestling related, no one's going to give a shit how well I can hit high crotch. They'll put you in jail for that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there is that. There is you know, that. <laughs> unless you're in a bar fight, who's going to care how good your seatbelt is? So you just do it as well as you can because that's who you are as a person, right? Because, like, There's... I know I'm coming to an end of my wrestling career and I'm just enjoying it now, right? Like, man, I love this sport. It's done so much for me. It's got me to Iowa. I met my wife. I have lifetime, lifetime friends. Like, what more can you ask for? Just because I didn't win a little bit more? Get the fuck out of here. Who cares? It makes my it makes my soul so happy because we lose it. We lose that. We lose that so often. No one gives a shit. It is about the relation. Here's why I love wrestling. It, yeah, it's. I'm sure great. you know how many guys you know that are phenomenal, but you're like, I don't want to be around you. Oh, you're shit. You're you know shit. what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Like I've met great guys at camps. I'm like, man, you're a great dude. Like, I had no idea. And I've met guys at camps. I'm like, I don't want to be around you. Yeah, yeah. How is how is that? How is that um, approach to wrestling kind of translated to how you compete? Has it has it made you been more carefree or anything along those lines? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like uh, the weight's off your back a little bit. You know, it's not so much life and death. You're like, yeah, man, I just love doing this. I want to do it because I enjoy it. And I like it doesn't take the passion away, right? But it's like. You get beat, like, okay, like, your wife still love you. Yeah, nothing's going to change. You know, I think almost – I used to put so much life and death in NCAAs. You know, your family comes out to watch you, and you don't perform the way you want to, and then next thing you know, it's like, God, they probably hate me. You're like, oh, no, I hate me. You know? But the I issue is, the equation. <laughs> I, I'm the issue here. You I'm know? the psychopath. Like, we were just talking about this the other day, me, Roper, and Parker about self-love and how you need to love yourself and be able to actually want to help yourself, you know, like how destructive you can be without even knowing it. It's wild. Well, you know, Lee and I talk about that a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, he spent some time out here. He nearly, he damn near killed himself. Not in the in the literal going to make, commit suicide way. I mean, yeah, yeah. In, a, in a figurative like, he almost put himself into the ground trying to get Parker a national title. Yeah, dude, I mean, his workload it's it's unbelievable, right? Like people don't realize how much he pours into. Now, I'm I, I'm sure a lot of NCAA coaches do. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure, but I'm just telling you that the guy that sat on my couch for a week and didn't mm-hmm. move two weeks after NCAAs was a a recovering man, you know, and that was really cool to see because it, it gives and it, it's hard to explain that to my son or my my wife because they don't know everything that goes into it. But mm-hmm. Aaron Books is really good at wrestling. Yeah. He's Dude, really, really, really 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 good at wrestling. And and it takes everything to beat a guy like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's it's interesting, man, because people don't realize just how much emotional toll 
that kind of stuff takes. And when you see it up close, yeah, you have a serious respect for the coaching staff that you guys have put together over there. So let me ask you this. Hmm? Do you think that 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 investment that you get from Schwab and Roper and the staff at you and I is the reason that generally with the, with the exception of Teske guys don't enter the portal from you and I, right? Like, I mean, Parker Keckheisen, I am certain without having any direct knowledge was, right. has been contacted with NIL deals. I am certain of it. Yeah. Okay? So like, you, no one has to tell me that. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's a, uh, we'll talk about it before, man. Like you're not going to meet a more loyal group, right? Like Doug will do anything for you. Like almost not to a fault, but like, he loves and cares about all of us. And we give it the same way to him, right? Like, whatever you need, Doug, whatever you need. You know, you see him jump in the corner, like hooting and hollering, you're like, hell yeah, I'll do anything for this guy, right? He just, he's such a good guy. And I don't know if people know it because like his antics, right? Like he chirps, but he is who he is. There's no blowing smoke. He's a straight shooter. And I think guys love that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, but we're in, we're in a, era of go get the bag yeah but that's hard isn't it like if someone's off you three hundred thousand dollars i ain't mad at him for going that's I'm what not, i'm saying i'm like, not mad at shane griffith i'm not mad yeah. at him like back in the day though like when it was like guys are just leaving i'm like it's all about loyalty it's all about loyalty but now they're throwing money out that's like life-changing money it's oh, different yeah. i'm not mad at him i'm just saying that parker keckheisen I don't know that there was three hundred thousand dollars on the table, but I know there was it was more than zero, and I'm, I'm pretty sure. sure it would have changed his life. Yeah, but he's still he's still a panther, and that to me is like that's yeah. the, the shining example. I try to put that and and like again, I am not faulting Bernie Truax. I'm really not. No, I'm I mean, not. why would you not go to that room, right? No, as a, as an upper weight. Yeah. For sure, I mean, you know. You, you know, so it's like I can't fault these guys. No, but there's something that is, I don't know, um, encouraging uh, about a guy like Parker yeah. staying in a purple singlet. I think a piece of it too it puts a chip on your shoulder. It's like, all right, we're gonna do it here. I'm gonna do it with this group of guys. And it is going to be what's going to be. You know what I'm saying? Like there is a little bit of point of pride. Like I think I can't speak for Parker, but myself, it's like, well, I'd rather do it here than anywhere else because this group of guys means the most to me. You know what I'm saying? At like I know the end of the day, that's kind of what matters. Yeah. Mm. I don't know, man. I haven't talked to Parker about it, but I just know, man. We I enjoy being around him. He enjoys being around all of us, and it's interesting. But it's hard, man. Like, uh, who's the Iowa State 84 pound, right? Like, was he Clarion? Something like that. Um, I'm, I'm sure, sure they threw quite a bit of money at him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's hard. I mean, yeah. you throw life changing money at people, like, yeah, I'm going to go this way. Because yeah. I feel like, you know, it's all about loyalty and loyalty. And then Thomas Gilman had a great quote when he uh, when he left the hockey wrestling club when Penn State's like, I'm loyal to myself. I'm loyal yeah. to myself, God, and my family. I'm like, yeah. Makes but it's still, a, it's still a balancing act, right? Like, if you're too loyal to a fault, that's on you. You lose out. Yeah, you, you can lose out for sure. But um, if you're not, not loyal, guys are like, I don't really trust you too much, right? Like, it's like we're always trying to balance these, these things. You know what else, too? If we're going to be completely honest, I mean, if we're going to be completely honest, how many times has it really worked out? Okay, it worked out for Thomas, right? But I'm yeah. talking about at a college level. Like, how many guys have taken that six year, graduated from an institution, put themselves in in in, in the portal, gotten the bag, and then yeah. over over overachieved from what they did at the original institution? I don't I don't know that it's really happened, right? No, I haven't. I mean, some guys are going to be good anywhere, but like a lot of those six years, man, they're worn down. That's what I'm saying. Six years of college is a long time to do it. 
long time. Five years is hard enough, you know? Especially those cats that are in the Big Ten and they're just every freaking week, they're just yeah. getting after it. Like, that's a brutal schedule to keep for more than half a decade. Like, what are we talking about? But you know what story you heard time and time again? It'd be like the guy's like, well, I, I, I beat up on the starter. They're not giving me a wrestle off. I'm going to leave. Then they mm -hmm. go and they just don't pan out. Like you see it so – I mean, that's what the old one was. And it's still mm -hmm. pretty common, right? Like, I'm just going to sure. report and leave. Yeah. Why do you think that they didn't pan out generally? Oh, you're right. I think they're pointing fingers and not looking internally. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm not – there's something I'm doing that's not allowing me to be the starter. You know what I'm saying? Instead of like – Fuck these coaches. I'm gonna get the hell out of here. That's like, mm -hmm. all right, we'll bring that ad to another team. That's not gonna be good either. You're just pointing fingers. You gotta look internal, that stuff. Yeah. And it can be frustrating, man. Sometimes you have the wrong people around you getting your ear, but like, yeah, they aren't treating you right. You're like, God, they're not treating us right either. And you're like, no, you guys are just not looking at the bigger picture. You guys are playing yeah. the victim a little too much. Yeah, it's tricky, right? Because like, you know, I'm not saying we got a Penn State room. And, and Polly, but mm -hmm. we do have guys who are placing the state tournament that are not going to start 100%. Like, I have, I have guys yeah. that, that are placing Fargo that aren't going to start 100%. That's tough to keep them here. It really yeah. is because they can go to RB, uh, they can go to wherever. And but look at the Lehigh situation, yeah, 33. That's wild. wild. I mean, it's, a good, it's a good problem to have, but it's also a problem. Crookham is number one in the country right now. He might not start. Yeah. Wild. Wild. I mean, that's a that's a good wrestler. Just yeah. beat a world champion. Good wrestler. He might not start. Yeah. Might not get the get the nod when it comes time for EIWAs. Yeah. That's wild. Like that's so that just brings me to like we have we are in the golden era of wrestling i truly believe that uh -huh. i truly truly do especially especially in, in the u.s so what does it feel like to know that you probably would have made the team already if it was 2009 <laughs> i don't know who's in it who's on the team in 209 86 uh, that was probably herbert right herbert that was tough he's a world man oh yeah i know i'm just I, i'm i'm just goofing but you know it's not like we would have given you the spot but i'm just saying like it's exponentially harder to make yeah. the team now than it ever has been. Yeah. It's What's that team. like competing with those guys? That's hard, man. Inches and ounces, right? Like we're all looking for, you know, like we're talking about recovery, right? We're all looking for a little bit of an edge there, right? Like what's going to get you just over that hump? What tournaments, mm -hmm. camps, training, anything you can do, right? Like, all those Penn State guys are really big in their nutrition, right? Like, what little edge are you going to find? Mm -hmm. But then all those edges have to funnel back into wrestling, right? Like, you lift so you're strong when you wrestle. You eat well so you have energy to wrestle. You sleep so you're recovered for wrestling practice. It all has to funnel into one spot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's really hard. Because yeah. sometimes we get caught up in the, oh, i got to lift today. Well, if, if, if I'm lifting just to get bigger muscles, that can't do much with someone else. In front the of, point, right? What is the freaking point? Yeah. What is the freaking point, dude? Like, this is what are we doing here? Like, I'd re much rather get better at wrestling. Um, yeah, it, it becomes a, a balancing act in that regard as well. If you had one avenue that you think you could really improve, whether it be recovery, strength training, um, sleep nutrition what what avenue do you think you could really improve on in the next for the the rest of the cycle me personally yeah uh probably mental i'd say like i do a good job with my sleep i do a good job with my diet wrestle all the time <laughs> probably uh probably mental work i don't know what aspects of it too it's gotten a lot better than it used to be so maybe i need to do a little soul searching and like where do i need to because i think i'm doing a good job and I think I'm doing a real good job, man. Like, I really believe in my training and everything I'm doing here. You know, maybe deal with the anxieties. Like, so sometimes I just sit on the couch and I always get nervous about wrestling. I'm like, well, that's kind of a weird thing to do. But maybe I, I think because I give a shit. Yeah. You know? It's hard not to. I wake myself up. 
I wake myself up. Yeah. Or it's I, like you, you just lay in bed and you're like, I got to do something, right? I got to do something. But it's good. I think if I lose that, then I should be done. Probably time to hang them off, huh? Yeah, right? Like the uncertainty, that's been the hard part, right? But this whole sport's uncertain. It's like, yeah, like you're not guaranteed anything. Because, dude, like, I'm telling you, I think I've put in a tremendous amount of work in the last four years, and I haven't got nearly what I want. So I got two choices. I keep putting the same work in, you know, tweaks and things here and there, or I'm just done, right? So it's like I believe in my work. I'm going to keep on doing it. That thing's going to hit, you know, and that's me believing myself, believing my coaches, believing the people I'm around. I'm doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it just takes a long time. Fuck, man, it took Doug eight years. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you don't always get to decide when it's your time, but yeah, keep putting the work in, keep putting the work in. And then at the end of the day, be like this, if it doesn't happen, like, damn, I put my best foot forward. I can hang my hat on that. Mm. Oh, it's tough to sell that to uh, a kid. For sure, man. Because like, you know, here's the problem that I have is like, especially at a younger age, we tell these kids, well, if you work hard, you get whatever you want. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> You're not guaranteed anything. Yeah. You know, so it's helpful. How do you, if you were selling that to a young athlete, how would you, how would you tell them that? Like break that news to them. Like <laughs> you, you get nothing. You get nothing. Yeah. So I don't know, man. I'd probably start early with them. Be like, hey, this isn't guaranteed. I tell them it ain't guaranteed. And this doesn't matter, yeah. you know. We the guy do. doing open heart surgery, that guy, that matters. Yeah. Me learning how to hit a high crotch doesn't matter. Yeah. In the grand scheme, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's tricky though, right? Because here's the here's the other end of that spectrum. It's like the work matters. For like, sure. Putting the work in matters. And like, so man, I uh, last year I was coaching more with the, the little guys, you know, cause my uh-huh. son was, was down there with them and there was this little girl and she was new to wrestling mm-hmm. and we had some hammers in the room and they put it on her pretty good. Yeah. And they, they, and this little girl, her dad, uh, bronc riders, tough, tough, mm-hmm. dude, tough dude. Um, he kept her in, you know, and I, I remember her crying, you know, she's doing the whole sniffling thing, trying to hold it in. Yeah. You yeah. know, <laughs> like, she, like she's not crying, but she was. Uh-huh. And I would just walk next to her. I say, we do it because it's hard. Yeah. It was today hard. She's like, mm-hmm. And, you know, it's I'm like, good. we do it because it's hard. Yeah. That's the fun part. The hard part's the fun part. Eventually, I promise you. And you know, eventually she starts sneaking out takedowns, but. Were feeling like one of the best things Doug talked about, right? We would do these hard workouts, and I'm like, you know, doing the head wobbles, and you're dragging your knuckles. He's like, good. It's supposed to suck. And, like, once you understand that, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm in the right place. Then. You're supposed yeah. to get tired of matches. You're supposed to get exhausted in practice, right? Like, once you understand that, it's easy. It's like, yes, yeah, it's part of it. That was, like, one of the best things he ever, like, told us, told me, you know. It's supposed to suck. And it does. And it does every time. That's the beautiful part of life, isn't it? Like, if yeah. everything is all great, then you wouldn't enjoy it as much. Mm-hmm. The ugly, the things that suck are, I think, the, some of the best things. Mm-hmm. You know? That's why That's why I go to Iowa every once in a while, just to remind me that's hey, not you, you guys out in California you got too good. Too good. I was just out there at Cal Poly wrestling with Evan Wick. I was like, you guys got it too good out here. It's too, it makes that's you stop. Dude, it makes you soft quick, dude. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I like shorts and t-shirt every day. Every day. You need every some day. you need some below freezing days. I don't, so you don't see the sun for I, I gotta be honest with you. Lou, I love you. Uh, I don't need that in my life anymore. That's good for the soul. <laughs> I get in that cold water every morning. I try. I, I'll I'll challenge myself. But God bless you for doing that. I don't know if I have the stones to do that yet. I thought about getting a horse trough and doing it. And I'm like, God, I don't know if I want to do it yet. I tell you what, I hey, feel that's this is the best I've ever felt. That's, that's the one luxury of living somewhere cold. Like 
I've been wanting to get a cold plunge, but I don't know if you know, but those things are ridiculously expensive. No, oh, yeah. And, no, no, no. You, don't have to, uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money. I do. I spent 150 bucks on mine. You just get a deep freezer. It's so it's, I, I know what you're talking about. Deep freezer buddy, is my, so my buddy has the $10,000 one with the jets in it and that kind yeah. of stuff. That some bitch is in the shop more than it's not. Okay. And he <laughs> has to have some, I'm not kidding. The filters going, if you are not scrubbed clean, like you like the oils from your skin go through that thing and i'm telling you right now the filters not are not equipped to deal with that okay especially some you know olive oil sweat and guinea like me I mean, there's no chance okay so i got a 150 dollars deep freezer and i put all the water in it and then i plug it in at night and then i unplug it in the morning and i get in it mm -hmm. and it's 150 bucks I'm telling you, yeah. it's the way to go. It's the only way to do it. Did you have to like seal the inside of that thing at all? I did. I took, I took some silicone caulking to it. And ain't bad at all, though. That's, I mean, it literally. And you know what's funny is like he is in the shop or whatever. He's got somebody that's coming to look at it or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, I got 150 bucks. I'll just get another one. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I can just go get another one. You know, yeah. I, I, I could have three. You know, maybe that's they're that expensive. I feel like people are just reinventing the wheel. Well, I mean, it's it's a freaking nice machine. Dude. It I mean, is. If man, I'm like, look, all you gotta do is real nice spin your arms around. Yeah, no, you get for the sure. Real pull effect, you know. <laughs> you ain't lying. You ain't lying. Because <laughs> that's exactly what I do. I make like the egg beater with my feet, and I'm like, well, there you go. Yeah, it's great. Now I'm shivering again. <laughs> that cold tub yeah. is good. It sucks to do it in the winter, right? Because like. You're cold all day. You get in the cold tub. You leave practice cold. You're just you got so much more skin in the game. So I gotta tell you, you know, like I said, my son and I have been doing it every morning. He texts me even in it was 79 degrees yesterday, and he texts me at lunch. He says, "I am still fucking shit right." No. I, son of a bitch! It will get you, man. It will get you, and Feels like better. I. Yeah, it's just like that bone cold. Yeah, through the whole day. So I'll go sauna, usually somewhere around ten a.m. So just to work yeah, you gotta be careful doing like the long sauna sits again. That cold tub about yeah. passed out the other day. Who did me? Who you did? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I was in. They just did a long sit. And I got in that. We got an ice barrel. Someone donated it to us, right? Uh -huh. Get in that barrel. I dunk, and I'm sitting there. Then like. You can start like feeling your pulse, you know. I started doing like head spins, and Doug's in there. He's like, "You all right?" I was like, "What?" I was like, yeah. So yeah, I was like, I was like, yeah, it's the room spinning for you too, Doug. So I gotta be smarter about that shit. All right, Lou, we gotta get you out of here. All right, let's get some quick questions in. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite wrestling shoe of all time? Uh, combat speeds. Yes. Combat speeds. That's a no great one. shoe. It's a great shoe. Great shoe. I used to have these old ones I wore when I was a freshman or sophomore, like the old John W's. They had like the spider on the bottom of them. Uh -huh. Those are pretty cool. Yeah, I got a pair of those. Yeah. Everything would be all right in the world if you had a pair of those. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, if you had a magic wand and you could wave it and change one thing about the sport of wrestling, what would it be? I'm real fucking pissed off about the reaction time right now in folk style. Oh, oh that's I pissing like me that. off. Yeah. The reaction yeah. time. Just what is the reaction time? Has anyone put a label like on it? Five seconds. It feels like it. Yeah. Not great. Not great. Oh, Hand yeah. touches, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why we can't go back to that, but yeah. okay. You like three point takedown? Uh I still need more data, but I think it's changing things. It's blown um, max wide open, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. So it changes dual meets in a big, big bad way, right? Mm -hmm. Like so, it it's it's way easier to get a major decision than it was a, lot, a year ago. So that's number one. Um, yeah, I want to see how it plays out, but I, but I, I, I think that if you look at Vegas, right? If you look mm -hmm. at CKLB, there were so many different upsets. Yeah, and I think it's going into it's go, it's adding to the amount of upsets, which is good, by the way. Yeah, 
that's having upsets is a very very good thing i think this is maybe in the missouri duel but i had jake hodges just put us in group chat he's like so if you take it if it's overtime you take a guy down to his back does your riding time keep going so if we're in overtime you take him down to my back saying. you can still get the major couldn't you oh shit. <laughs> oh wow I didn't is he what i'm saying that. oh that's shit. Because it makes the math point. so crazy. Like normally you'll watch a match and you're like, oh, it's a you know six point match or four point match. Like I know what's gonna happen. And now yeah. you're like, oh, it's a seven point match, like one takedown to his back, and you're like, oh wow, like yeah, you're right back into match. it. You just busted my mind. Hodge that that is some Hodge shit though. He would he would bring that up. Yeah. I think it said it happened in maybe a Missouri match. I didn't see it, but like Take down overtime, held the guy there for a while, but like could have possibly got the major. That's wild. I wa- I read somewhere, uh, unrelated to wrestling, but they were talking about sports being, I think it was like soccer being low scoring, and they were talking about football. And they were like, football isn't that high scoring of a sport. It's like uh, three to two, yeah. but one score is worth seven points or yeah, three yeah, points. Yeah. So it seems like it's, a lot of scoring and a lot of action and it seems mm-hmm. like wrestling is going a little bit that way with the new scoring yeah no i, I don't know that about that because they change like so an escape i think the, the concept behind it was the escape was 50 percent was worth 50 percent of a takedown i don't think that is valid mm-hmm. an escape being worth 33 percent of a takedown well, that makes more logical sense. It's it's it should be three times harder. Yeah. Um, so you like it in the sense of like reversals too. Say again. Like in for reversals, right? So a reversal is what sixty six sixty six percent of a takedown. Of a takedown. Like yeah. I like that. Yeah, that it makes, makes sense. sense. Makes sense. I get that. Like that logically over the course of the years that I've spent on this spinning rock watching this dumb sport. That makes sense, right? Like that, that, that logically equates to me. I, I just never understood why, you know, takedown was, you know, only 50% more than yeah. the skating, which I didn't, but, but again, like it's, it's adding a wrinkle that like Joel said, like, well, there's more s- there's maybe less strategy involved. I don't know, uh, yeah. but th- that's that's kind of cool though, right? Because it's adding to the upsets, and upsets mm-hmm. is something that we really need more of in this sport. We yeah. desperately, desperately need more of. Um, so, yeah, I think it's it's a good thing uh, in, so far, right? I mean, well, we'll see, right? It's taken me a little bit to get used to. Uh... You know when you would see like a box score? Like, okay, yeah. it's probably a takedown escape, takedown escape. Now, uh-huh. like, all right, it was three. It's taking me a little bit to like run the math through my head to be like what actually probably happened in the match, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, on Mike, I've said that's a three point <laughs> yeah. three. Three point three. Um, so, yeah, on Mike, it, it has tripped me up. But all right, last one is who is on the Mount Rushmore of wrestling? All four? Yeah. Uh, fuck, I got my four favorites. All right. Yeah, I'll do my four favorites. Right. Lincoln McRavey, Satiev, Fetsayev, and... Uh, gotta, gotta be Americans. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. All right. Lincoln McRavey, John W., Is that the first McElroy we've gotten, Joel? Yes. That is the yeah, first McElroy. I love it. That's how me and my dad actually bonded watching wrestling. We would watch just Lincoln McElroy clips. It was awesome. Was it? Was yeah. We had like you know, we had the VHS at West Gym. And we had like the tapes and put them in there and just watch Lincoln McElroy show boot scoots and wrestle at practice. It was awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so John W. and Lincoln McElroy, who else? Uh, I want to say Gable, but if we're looking at stats, Schultz is definitely, I don't know, man. All right. So you got Gable, McElravey, and John W. 
me see. I need a list. I'm having a hard time with this. The Americans. Uh, well, you guys tell me yours. Give me a little bit. No. Just give me a little bit. <laughs> no. This is supposed to be hard. We do it because it's hard. Okay. <laughs> Mentally hard stuff I hate doing. Physically, it's great. Uh, John W. It, by the way, don't feel bad because everyone gets tripped up on the fourth. Yeah. So everyone will rattle off the first three, but the fourth is always the trouble, the trouble one. I got to think in like the Olympics. 96. You got to go Sanderson. Okay. Yeah. What was, my third, wait, what was my third one? So it was Dan Gable, John Smith, Lincoln McElravey. Scratch Gable. Scratch I Gable. I'm just Sorry. saying, I think I could put someone in like with maybe a little different. Okay. So we got Kale. Yeah, Kale. I'm, yeah, I'm going Schultz. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I like that. I don't know that we've had Dave Schultz. This That's is complete. Amazing. This is completely biased. This is just people I like. No, no. That's fine. That's okay. Definitely. I mean, if we're looking numbers. I'm sure there's better numbers out there. Sure. Um, but I love Dave Schultz because I think he was such an innovator, and he deserves to be up there, man. He, yeah. I think he really does. Super innovative, man. Like he changed changed so much you didn't have to be from oklahoma state or iowa mm -hmm. to win like that was cool to me too so. he was uh he was wisconsin he was oklahoma he was oklahoma but i'm saying like oklahoma, oklahoma state. state yeah yeah you didn't have to wrestle for oklahoma state or iowa to be on the team and win right, gold medal. tell me y'all's list then well so for me it's jb oh okay it's john w it's Kale Sanderson and Dan Gable. Um, You're close. Yeah. So, John, like for different reasons, of course, right? Yeah. Like, like I, I think that this sport has changed so much because of at least three of those people, right? Like Dan yeah. Gable set a bar of like, okay, if you work hard, you can pretty much do everything. Because Dan Gable is not the most talented wrestler ever, mm -hmm. right? But, but he. Like he set the bar and then John comes along in the nineties or eighties, late eighties, early nineties. Yep. And he said, okay, that that's like the postmodern version of the sport where technique plus hard work can mm -hmm. get you pretty much everything you want. And then you've got JB comes along in 2011. And they wrestling. Yeah. It's like, I like guess just, he, he's the full package, right? Mm -hmm. Like he is, you have to be everything now. You have to watch what you eat and you have to strength train yeah. and you have to have technique and you have to be hardworking. And by the way, you need, probably should have a social media presence. And by yeah. the way, you know what I mean? So it's like he is as uh, complete and he is kind of the meta modern version for me. And then there's Kale who real hard to beat him as far as coaching. Yeah. You know, he was a great competitor, probably one of the best pure wrestlers um that we've seen but what he's done for coaching can't beat him right now can't nope. beat him really hard so yeah those that's my rush more i don't know if we've ever gone through our rush more have we joel no oh, that's good to know First time. Yours, joel oh man i don't want to have a cop out here but i feel like mine's pretty similar to mike uh oh, damn it jb and kale mm -hmm. uh John Smith. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a big wrestling historian, uh -huh. but I mean, it's hard to turn down Dan I mean, Gable. Like Gable, right? Yeah. I mean, here's a freaking Wheaties box, dude. I mean, if you're thinking of guys that like change the sport, that I want to put Asker in there too. Then you know what I'm saying? You might be yes, one hundred percent. Like that's that's that is to me like that the transformative aspect of this. And like people think that Ben transformed wrestling because of funk and stuff like that, and it did. He did. Mm -hmm. Like him rolling around with Jake Herbert on national television, that was a big deal. Like yeah. him, they looked like two singlets in a dryer for seven minutes, and people were like, "Yo, what is that? Yeah, what is that? That's not what I'm used to." And yeah, that changed the sport for sure. 
but he also cleaned up technique. Yeah. Couldn't take low singles anymore. Like you couldn't take shitty shots anymore because guys would get too good at. Well, hell of a win for him. I think I would have got my ass beat a lot more. You were you were a little funkier in college or in high school, rather in high school. But you yeah. you figured it out more in college for sure. Yeah, definitely had different areas, but it's like I'm biased with the three point takedowns. Like, great, I would have been coming out of the first period nine to three. Like <laughs> we're in a we're in a hole now. <laughs> Stop going. <laughs> I think when you when you talk about transforming the sport too, like you think of everybody coming from the top level, right? And you okay. talk about you know JB, but. I think Ashkin's actually a really interesting pick too because he's really transformed the sport, but really more so at like a lower level, like how clubs sure. operate, how you're yeah. how you're practicing, what that what the whole process of getting into the sport looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and you can win multiple national titles and not you know and, and look a lot different, right? Yeah. Like he he had you know and, and Ben will say this like he's not you know shy about it. He had dad bod, dude in college like 174 pound dad bod yeah you know he wasn't ripped he, jake herbert looked like the, the you know a, a super like a hulk yeah he was a monster dude he was an absolute monster all right lou you're the best you're the best dude. i appreciate you guys having me on i had a good time that's good man i'm psyched to have I'm you a person I'm, trying to, I'm not really actually trying to work on that but it was, it, it was wonderful it made me so happy. Lou, you're the best. We'll talk to you next time, brother. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, sure. I'll see you. Thank you.